is uh, why Ruby on Rails. You're all here, maybe someone's recommended it to you, maybe you think it's cool already or something like that. Uh, now, the, the first thing about Ruby on Rails is it's built using a programming language called Ruby. Now, there are lots of different programming languages and they all have their positive points. But Ruby is a very unique programming language because it's the only programming language that was built to optimize developer happiness. So it's about making a developer happy as opposed to maybe running really fast or doing mathematical computations or you know building graphical interfaces or something like that. This is really, really awesome because I have to deal with a programming language every day and if it's a programming language that makes me happy then hopefully I'm more productive and you know create more value for my clients or my boss or whoever myself Ruby is when it's written well is remarkably similar to English in the way that you read it uh, once you've had a little bit of practice the other thing that's really awesome is that there are thousands, tens of thousands, nearly 60,000 libraries that have been built by the Ruby community that you can put into your application, you can build off. There are lots of different things, so uh, the guy who normally does this presentation, he wrote the library, the little block of code that sends email in the Rails application. Uh, there are lots of other ones, so if you want to, uh, as I said, do math stuff and get extract things out of Excel using CSV, then there's a gem for that. Uh, if you wanted to uh, integrate with, let's say, Google Analytics, there's a gem for that. If you wanted to uh, build a web application, there's a gem for that. That gem is called Rails, and we're going to get to that in a second. Uh, there's been a lot of gems. There's constantly new gems being created and that's really awesome. Rails is a system that has been built around developer happiness and that means that developers can build things very rapidly and Rails itself is optimized for developers to build things quickly and that means that you don't have to throw away the prototype that you build it's meant to be done in such a way that you can build quickly, but you can build in such a way that you're building correctly at the same time. Rails is very opinionated about what an application should look like. And that means that because you're building it with Rails, you don't necessarily have to start from scratch once you've got your little example about how things are going to work. The blog that you're building now is actually very, very similar to the one that's used on the Reinteractive website. The next part is a little bit more technical and this is one of the reasons why Rails is really awesome and it's called Model View Controller. Now, it's probably, it, depending on how much experience you've had with programming, you may or may not understand exactly what's happening and that's fine, but inside your Rails application there is this structure. So what happens is you've got the browser down the bottom here and it sends a request over the, through the internet to your website and that gets received by the controller. The controller talks to your database through this thing called the model and then it takes the model and it renders a view. So the view is like the HTML that is sent back to the browser and that structure is a very common software architectural pattern called MVC or Model View Controller. And when Rails came out, this was a little bit different. This was a little bit revolutionary. Almost every other framework now is built this way, but Rails was sort of the first to do this. The other awesome thing that you get with Rails, and you've probably already seen this, is you get all these folders, when you start your application, there's a lot of different things that come with it. And that goes back to Rails being opinionated about how you should build your application. Part of that, those opinions are where should you put things inside your application, what it should look like, 
And this means that if oh, you know another developer comes along and looks at your blog, they'll be able to instantly know where to go to find the logic for your application and all that sort of good stuff. So just as an example, if you wanted to put an image into your application, it goes into app, assets, images. If you wanted to configure Rails, it goes in the config folder. If you've got something that, that changes the database, it goes in DB. If you need to write some tests, it goes in test. Uh, if you need to create a new controller, it goes in app controls and so on. Rails by default is very secure. It's not perfect and there are occasionally issues, but a lot of the things that would, you'd have to spend a lot of time thinking about if you build it from scratch, build your own thing, it just handles by default. So if you do it the Rails way, you probably won't have any problems with cross-site scripting attacks, SQL injection, session hijacking, and uh, a bunch of other things. Uh, these things are critically important. An SQL injection attack would allow someone to take over and extract things from your database without your permission. A uh, session hijacking attack would allow someone to log in as someone else. So let's say you've got a, uh, let's say you're building a banking application and you've got like an administrator user. Uh, you don't want anyone logging in as the administrator except for the administrator. Rails supports a lot of different things. Uh, so it comes by default with very powerful JavaScript support. Uh, it can also support XML and JSON. XML is going to be covered by the blog. So if, you, if you've ever heard of a thing called RSS, then uh, you're going to learn about that in the guide. Uh, you can do something called AJAX. AJAX is uh, a way of enhancing the website so that it performs and behaves in a much nicer way, uh, feels a lot more smooth, and Rails supports that by default. Uh, if you think back to this thing here, you'll notice the database sits down the bottom here and it's protected from the controller by this model. So one of the really cool things about Rails is you don't have to understand SQL or the database to store things in a database. Instead of writing select star from comments where post ID equals three, you can just say, find me the post that's number three, and then give me the comments for it. So that's, that's the bottom part is just a little bit of Ruby code, and the top part is just SQL. Because of that, you can also run it on lots of different types of databases, and that's really awesome as well. One of the things that you'll do with the blog is, you're building it using a database called SQLite. It's a very simple, easy to use database, but it's not really suitable for production servers. So if you want to deploy something to the internet, you probably don't want to use SQLite. But when you deploy to Heroku later on tonight, it's going to automatically change your database from SQLite to Postgres, which is another database server, and that's handled because Rails can just do any type of database you can probably think of. This is a, a something more appropriate, so more applicable to the community rather than Rails itself. But the community has a strong sense that you should not repeat yourself when you're programming. And that has a really positive benefit because you don't, by not repeating yourself, you don't have to change multiple locations in your code when you want to change it. So if you've, if you've coded two things that look exactly the same, but they're slightly different, then Rails would try to steer you away from doing that. It doesn't prevent you from doing this, but generally speaking, it tries to steer you away from it. The other thing that unfortunately isn't covered in the first two posts that you're going to be going through, uh, Rails has a heavy focus on automated testing. Now by that, I don't know how many of you have worked in like web development or anything like that, but if you've worked in a large company, you've probably got like a QA team or something similar, someone who's paid to take a script, and a script is like a series of commands and like click through your website. Rails has the ability to uh, 
get a machine to do that instead. So you can literally write code that automatically s steps through your website step by step. And that's part of the automated testing. And this is really, really amazing. If you've got a lot of automated tests, you're able to change your application <coughs> without worrying about breaking something else. So as an example, if you've got an application that lets you log in and you want to add a new feature to this application, you can add that feature without worrying that you're going to break the login system. Conventions. This goes a little bit back to Rails being opinionated about things. So Rails has a very strong sense of what the convention and what the correct way of doing things is. It's not going to force you to do it, but it makes following those conventions very, very easy. This makes it easier for new developers to get started, and it also makes it very easy for other developers to come along and help you out, because they don't have to learn your way of doing things, provided you're doing it the Rails way. Anyway, let's keep going and keep eating. I'm, I was hoping more people would be eating rather than just looking at it.